Today we'll be having a look at LMI or Lenders Mortgage Insurance. You'll hear about LMI when you enter the realm of borrowing money for the purpose of purchasing real estate. From my experience in my professional life, I've found this financial product to be one of the most heavily misinterpreted by consumers. Let's start by looking at the mortgage from the bank's point of view. You want to purchase a piece of real estate, which is a relatively risky asset. The bank has an incentive to lend you money because that's their business and that's how they make their money. If the bank has a mortgage on your property, it means they own it and they have the final say on what to do with it. Sometimes the borrower, for whatever reason, defaults on their mortgage by missing too many payments and the bank has to take the house away and sell it to somebody else to pay back some or all of the amount owing on the mortgage. If the bank sells the house and the proceeds from the sale don't cover the value of the mortgage, then that amount is still owing by the borrower and the bank has made a loss. Since the borrower is already defaulted and missing payments, it's unlikely they will ever repay the amount outstanding and for the purpose of this example, we will assume that this is the net loss. Because of the above example, the bank has an incentive to make sure you're not borrowing too much and you can keep up with your repayments for if they ever have to foreclose on your house. They do this by asking you to make a deposit or a down payment on the house. In Australia, they tend to ask for at least 20% equity deposit to approve you for a loan, all other things equal. When the borrower really wants a home and they don't have the 20% deposit they need, a third party company called a lender's mortgage insurer is able to come to the table to provide lender's mortgage insurance or LMI. The LMI is a one-off payment usually added to the mortgage that is most costly the less equity you will have in the property. The way it works is they pledge to the lender that if the borrower defaults on their payments and the foreclosure results in a net loss for the bank, the insurance provider will foot the rest of the bill. The bank is happy to accept that agreement because it protects their downside risk, which is exactly the point of insurance. And this is where I see a lot of confusion come up. The first reason is that borrowers think they have the insurance. Some people think that if they stop paying, the LMI will cover the foreclosure and the borrower will get off scot-free. This is a complete fallacy that I believe is perpetuated by the banks and insurance providers and I would go as far to say it is a form of predation in the industry. Having said that, it's called lender's mortgage insurance not borrower's mortgage insurance. And it is up to you, the consumer, to understand what you are doing. Whether the loss is absorbed by the bank or by the LMI provider, it's ultimately you, the borrower, that pays for it in one way or another per the contracts you signed. Let's summarize. For the luxury of purchasing the home without having the minimum deposit, usually 20% of the value of the property, it's the borrower that pays for the lender's insurance. Once you reach a 20% deposit, in most cases, you don't have to pay LMI. It's a one-off payment that varies based on your equity percentage and which LMI provider you use. That is usually, but not always, added onto the principal of the debt and paid off over the life of the mortgage. It does not get transferred to a new mortgage if you sell and rebuy a new property that has under 20% deposit. If you sell up and get a new mortgage that needs LMI, you'll have to pay it all over again. Moving on, when would LMI make sense? I believe in the adage, pay it when you have to, avoid it when you can. For the purpose of this video, I won't be speaking to people trying to purchase property for the point of living in it as a principal place of residence. There's simply too many subjective elements that go into that and we cannot make any reliable comments on that cohort. But I will say, if you need a place to live and you've decided to own rather than rent, then there's really no arguing with the price of LMI if that is helping you tick off a life goal. But if I'm investing in real estate and it's gonna take, say, several years to come up with a 20% deposit in a market 
that I'm thoroughly confident will grow more than the cost of that LMI in that same time period, then it would make sense to use LMI. Put another way, when the expected gain or payoff from holding that real estate now rather than later is greater than the cost of the LMI over the time it would take to save the 20% deposit, then it seems to make sense to me to invest with the aid of LMI. Having said that, there are more factors to consider which couldn't possibly be summarized and tailored to you over the internet by a stranger. So it's important to go out there and perhaps have a chat with an experienced mortgage broker or perhaps a property planner. I do hope it's been an informative video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.